seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and touching. These senses enable us to interact with the world around us. We live and learn through these amazing tools. And ultimately, through all this, we are able to feel certain emotions. Today, I would like to talk about the seeing part of us. Just imagine for a second what it would feel like to be blind. Use your imagination. You wouldn't, be see, you wouldn't be able to see the faces of your loved ones. You wouldn't see the beautiful flowers outside today. It would be hard to tell what's written right next to you. Yes, the inability to see would have the greatest negative impact on our lives. But surprisingly, 285 million people around the world are visually impaired. This is a huge number when you consider it is about 90% of the total U.S. population. What's more surprising is 80% of these cases are preventable through a simple eye care service. In other words, a large number of people didn't have to suffer from poor vision. If the simple eye care service is the solution for this, why are so many people suffering? You may not be surprised to know that most of the people who are visually impaired are living in remote, impoverished, and underserved areas. For them, this simple eye care service may not be just simple. So, while I was a student um, at the Institute of Optics at the University of Rochester, I was thinking, uh, what's going on? What's the problem? The bas basic problem is because inaccessibility of current eye care has. And we need to understand what's causing it. As I just said, while a student at the Institute of Optics at the University of Rochester and an undergraduate researcher at the Flama Institute, I've been dreaming about developing highly sophisticated and probably expensive ophthalmic instrument. That seemed to me a cool thing to do because that's what people in the marketplace want and get wildly excited about. And that's how I would get a job. But this view didn't last long. It was back in 2013 when I was first exposed to various types of blindness prevention projects in underserved areas. And I immediately realized that the bulky device, highly sophisticated device that I've been dreaming about, could not play a major role in resource-limited environments. They are typically bulky, expensive, and time-consuming to operate. Also, since primary schools in such areas are scattered and distances between them are great, there are huge costs involved in logistics to deploy eye health professionals and current-day bulk equipment to where the students are. This is when I started focusing on solving this bigger problem. Over the last two years, I've been leading a project to solve this problem by developing a breakthrough technology. When we first started, we focused on the problem, the inaccessibility of eye care. To break this inaccessibility equation and reach out to more people, my team and I had to develop a device which was portable, less expensive, fast, and easy to use. And we were able to make it real. We call it the eye poor father. Size your feast. Just put it in front of the eye for a second. That's it. It doesn't require any technical know-how. It doesn't require any um, further interaction with patients. This measures your prescription refraction right on site. You can process the data instantly to produce a basis for the prescription um, less than a second. So, how, how does it work? How can you do this? How can it be smaller, less expensive, faster, and easier to use? You all probably remember this picture you saw looking inside the measurement device. When we examine the device, we find three main components, illumination source, lenses, and sensor. While you're looking at the illumination target, the light reflected back from your eye falls on the sensor. If your eye has some refractive errors, the signal received by the sensor may not be sharp. So by moving these lenses back and forth, the device finds the best focus point. 
That's why the image you see turns from blurry to sharp, and that's why it takes a while to obtain a measurement. But we wonder, what if you make the sensor a little bit more intelligent and have it perform all the work instead? In other words, rather than giving multiple signals by moving these lenses back and forth, can you just shine light once and let the sensor figure out the rest? That's basically what we did. That's why we don't need all these lenses and moving parts, and now it only takes a second to take a measurement. We've been working with a group called Project BOOM, which is acronym for Blindness Zero Movement. Driving an elaborate truck called Mobile Blindness Prevention Center, equipped with full diagnostic tools, we've been serving people in developing countries. Having an advanced and portable device and working closely with local physicians, we believe that we can exponentially expand our reach and accessibility in the field. I believe that solving, and, um, solving this global visual impairment problem isn't only about correcting refractive error. <laughs> what do I mean? 80% of what children learn is acquired through the visual processing of information. Good sight is crucial to education. Today, I want to emphasize that just few cutting-edge technologies will never be able to solve the problem. It requires many people's participation, coming from many different angles. Our team's effort is just one piece of that solution. I want to leave you with this one last challenge. You, or anyone in this room today, can be another piece of that solution. Much more is needed. You can help. <laughs>